Are you a passive cue ball, your path determined by whatever bumps you? Or are you freely and independently choosing your own path? We've debated this determinism versus free will question for millennia with no resolution. Here's a new, strictly scientific angle on it that suggests we've got neither free will nor determinism, but something else. First, a quick word about whether we want free will. We do and we don't. We want freedom to achieve, and we want a predictable, deterministic world to achieve in. Like a ratchet, sort of. Freedom to rise, but determinism to keep us from falling. Or reverse it, determinism that fates us to glory, but freedom to escape fated doom. Not that what we want matters to what we have, but check this out. Apparently, we have wants. We have will. Will gets scant attention in the free will debate. Free will advocates simply assume will and argue that it's free. Determinists assume will away like we're passive, not willing anything. There's no scientific explanation of the will we so obviously have, evident in our wants, but also in our will to live, our trying to stay alive. And not just ours, all organisms, selves I'll call them, have the will to live. For most selves, will is neither felt nor conscious, but it's obviously there. Selves don't just passively replicate, selves are proactive. In the universe, everything falls apart, peters out or degenerates, but selves keep on keeping on, trying, willing, working, aiming to not die, not degenerate, but rather self-regenerate. Will to live is life's basic bias, a bias towards work to keep on trucking instead of petering out. All of us selves, microorganisms, plants, not just animals or humans, will to live isn't just passive willingness like whatever, if natural selection makes me live, fine, I'll go along with it. It's striving, what Darwin called the organism's struggle for existence. Non-selves, inanimate things, don't try to do anything. They last a while if they're durable. Selves are not durable. Just watch us fall apart at death, though not before passing on our will to live to offspring. Yet here we are, continuously for eons. That's will to live. We put up a fight. So forget determinism. Cue balls are determined, selves are not. So does that mean we have free will? Not so fast. To answer that, we need to understand will better than we do, starting with the will to live, since that's where will starts. Funny thing, for all we've learned across the sciences, we still have no explanation for the will to live. Sure, we have names for it, will, agency, motivation, desire, life force, soul, spirit, and names for what it makes possible, trying, effort, goal-directed behavior, dedicated work, and we do know where it happens, in bodies, in biology, organic chemistry, hearts, brains, but still no explanation for what it is or how it works. Now really, how can we expect to resolve the free will debate if we don't even know what the hell will is? scientist Terry Deacon has a previously overlooked explanation of will from its origins in chemistry. A great place to start if you want to sort out what will really is. Here though, we'll start with your will. You're watching this video instead of a jillion other things you could be doing. And thanks, by the way. That's biasing all you could do down to what you want or will to do. You've got energy from breakfast burning a hole in your pocket. You could expend it on all sorts of things, but you're biased towards spending it working on some things instead of others. Extend that to all selves, all biased against some work and toward others, especially against degenerative work and toward regenerative work. In an aimless chemical universe, stuff peters out. Life tries not to. Life starts as chemistry that by accident happened to be biased toward working against petering out. 
of all the degenerative and regenerative reactions possible, even the first cells were biased towards regenerative reactions. So if you're looking for a thing that's the will or soul or self, you're going about it wrong. It's not a thing, it's a change in biases. The universal bias is towards degenerative work. The self's bias is towards regenerative work, toward trying to keep going. A self is something more from something less than nothing but chemistry, which is cute, but needs a little unpacking. Nothing but chemistry. Everything selves do is chemical, conforming to natural law. Something less than, but it's not just anything goes chemistry. It's chemistry biased towards self-regeneration. Something more, not a new thing, but a changed probability. See, in lifeless chemistry, degenerative work is way, way more probable than regenerative work. Petering out beats keeping going every time, well, almost every time, at the origins of life, a minor chemical process bias against degenerative work made regenerative work slightly more probable. That slightly became increasingly robust over evolutionary time to now. Life's probability of regenerative work all the way up to you and yours. Not fate, but high likeliness of regenerating for a while to come. Congratulations, by the way. Nice to be here on Earth with you. But check this out. If will is self-restraint, a biased limitation on what's likely to happen, free will is an oxymoron. Free means anything goes. Will means not anything goes. And while oxymorons can be nonsense, this one makes sense. You don't want anything goes freedom. You want freedom to exercise your will, your focused, biased wants. Anything goes, freedom, you'll get soon enough, alas, at death. So there is our ambivalence. We want freedom to follow our biases. The will to live wants a ratchet, traction on what is used to keep ourselves going, growing and proliferating offspring with a healthy self-regenerative bias like we have. Now that's just an initial taste of how to deliberate about free will from Terry's new angle. From here, you can follow your biases in fork directions in the next videos or off in some other direction, expending that breakfast on some other willful bias if you prefer. One fork is Terry's chemical origins of will story, how it emerges from chemistry at the origins of life. The other fork is why we end up with the unpredictability that feels like free will. The key to that is this. Non-living phenomena from stones to stars to supercomputers is all just cause and effect. With will, there is means to ends interpretation, guessing how best to bias your breakfast into work that prevents degeneration and favors regeneration. A cue ball doesn't interpret cues from cue sticks, but you interpret cues from your circumstances which opens a can of worms of possible biases, not passive freedom like the cue balls, but open-ended, proactive, willed biases. Interpretations yield changes in ways that cause and effect phenomena don't. Changes so variable and unpredictable that they feel free, but aren't. You're not choosing what to do free and independent of all outside circumstances. You're willfully, attentively, and responsively interpreting outside circumstances, doing biased interpretive work for your own benefit. That's different in ways I can explain, and really different in humans given our use of language. Interpretation gone wild in visionary, delusional, unpredictable ways. Thanks for your biased, constrained willingness to focus on this with me for a spell. On to other videos, if you will it.